Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Pagam Radian here at the Association of the United States Army's 2019 Conference and Trade Show in Washington, D.C., the number one gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by General Motors Defense, Bell, L3 Harris, and Leonardo DRS. And we're here at the BAE System Stand to talk to Jim Miller, retired United States Army uh, Colonel, uh, acquisition uh, wizard, who's now the Director of uh, Business Development for Combat Vehicles here. Jim, it's always good to see you. Yeah, you too. I don't know about all that, but yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> Good, good see you. Ah, it's always good to build up the <laughs> guests uh, a little bit, especially when you're in their home. Yeah. Uh, very cool vehicle behind you, but that's not what we're going to talk about. Um, Three-way race uh, going on for the Army's uh, Bradley replacement. Uh, I know that there was a lot of enthusiasm over the years. Talk to Mark Signorelli, uh, Signorelli and others here at the company about how bullish you guys were about that program. The requirement came out. Uh, this is part of the new drive, the Futures Command, working with the acquisition community in terms of driving this program forward. Uh, the Rheinmetall Raytheon team was disqualified for a late vehicle. Mm -hmm. You guys decided not to bid on uh, the vehicle, and then uh, General Dynamics appears that they're still uh, in the race. Talk to us a little bit about how you guys arrived at that decision, because you ended up winning the AMP-V decision a few years ago uh, when General Dynamics decided not to bid. Yeah, well, well, first of all, we're really proud of AMP-V. I mean, those five variants, we're working very closely with the Army on doing those, and so that's uh, that's something we're really excited about, and we've got that right in our wheelhouse right now, and it's right in front of us as we go through the uh, process of transition that it, from EMD to LREP. So very important to us to get the, the AMP-V program running and get it delivered on time with the Army. So key uh, critical requirement for us is that AMP-V. And if you recall, when we talked about OMFV, and I was the one that did the announcement, we talked about how we, we had chosen to move ahead and we were gonna leap ahead into some of the things that we saw as being the real future of the Army. Not to disagree with the Army on OMFE because that was important too, but what we saw was our wheelhouse led us better to the robotic combat vehicles. And that's what we uh, announced back then that we would choose to focus on. And behind me, we've got our robotic technology demonstrator, which is uh, us showing you that we kept our part of the deal and we're focused on that leap ahead technology that you can put on a robotic combat vehicle. But was also part of the concern whether the contract was going to be executable at the end of the day? I mean, the Army is being very aggressive, uh, for example, on the future armed uh, reconnaissance uh, aircraft. Um, and there's this sense that the Army was very, very aggressive in the requirement at the end of the day. I mean, was that part of the issue as well from where you guys were sitting? So I think the, we looked really carefully at the amount of work that we have. And we've been very fortunate to win a great deal of opportunity from the Army, AMV being the big program. We got PIM going on, which uh, both are critical programs of the Army. I mean, PIM is which, which is the Howitzer Upgrade Program. Yeah, I'm sorry, PIM is the Howitzer Upgrade, and it's critical to the IRCA program, which is the number one priority for the U.S. Army. And so, clearly, we've got a lot going on. We've got to get after those key programs. Uh, AMP-V is a critical piece of next gen. So is MPF, and we have an MPF contract as well. So we're right there in the next gen wheelhouse. And we are really looking at how do we support that effort? How do we get after the next the next step? And again, we decided to put our focus on RCV, given all of that. And uh, you know, just go back. OMFE is a critical program to the Army, no doubt about it. It wasn't what we wanted to do. It wasn't right for us. We've decided to support them with the three other pieces of next gen combat vehicle. And uh, you know anybody who's seen the uh, A7 over there uh, thinks that it is a very, very, very cool uh, vehicle, especially with uh, the long tube on it. Let's talk a little bit about the vehicle behind you. Um, you guys have been working on uh, automated uh, systems for quite a long time, actually, uh, especially when it came to unmanned turrets and other systems that uh, would go on the vehicle. Talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing behind yeah. you. So behind me, we have the uh, we call it the robotic technology demonstrator, and uh, we described it best as a rolling lab. It's a, it's a vehicle that allows us to uh, experiment with, try new things, try new ideas, and see what those real leap ahead uh, technologies are. We're pretty excited about it because, you know, we all see great value in removing risk from soldiers on the battlefield. And, but at the same time, we want to increase the lethality of the Army units that are out there. And things like uh, RCVs and RTDs, uh, this demonstrator that we built, um, really get us after that key critical skill, which back that soldier out of contact with the enemy, and but increase the overall lethality of those Army units. So the RTD behind me, the Robotic Technology Demonstrator, is our attempt to create this rolling lab that allows us to run those experiments, looks at what works, what doesn't work. We keep it in a modular uh, setup so that we could bring in new lethality packages, new sensor packages, 
and what we're really finding out is, you know, our company has this long history of integrating um, intelligence and autonomy uh, in the air domain, the space domain, and a little bit in the ground domain. And how do you take all that strength of the company and put it after this project, which is a robotic vehicle for the battlefield? And it's really, really important to us. Uh, and so we brought this here to show off what we're doing. And uh, this is really the demonstrated has kind of a current set of technologies on it. And those technologies are a great place to start, but there's stuff beyond that that we want to get after and be able to move put onto a vehicle that works and it rolls and we know it can operate the way it's designed to. And how does adding a new technology help us get after that mission, right? And that's really critical for us. How do we get after that mission and what are those big leaps we get? And it might just be one new technology that gets added to it and how well you integrate it that matters. How far, uh, you know, autonomy is something everybody's been working at. Actually, there was a, uh, right, a, a battlefield breacher or something that was the first fully sure. autonomous uh, evolution that was conducted recently, which was a very, very imp impressive piece of um, technology. Talk to us a little bit about how you guys are working the autonomy part of the problem. You guys have been involved in a lot of very sophisticated programs. You guys have been making a lot of investment on that uh, because I know you guys see that as a cross-cutting investment on the commercial side uh, of the business as well. But where are you, you know, how long, when, when senior leaders come and stop by and ask you how long before you can develop an autonomous vehicle, what do you, what do you, what do you tell them? Yeah, well it's, it's critical to kind of define autonomy too, right? So there's, a, we still have a requirement to keep a person in the loop for the lethality thing. So there's always going to be that semi-autonomous thing in the lethality piece. So having said that first, just set that aside. But the, the ability to do autonomous driving, autonomous maneuver, and um, maybe even autonomous target identification, is right right in front of us. It is very close. You've heard uh, General Kaufman talk about how close he thinks it is and how he can speed up the program. We think he's right. Uh, there is some speed we can be gained from this program as he's laid out. Uh, so autonomy is, in, is on top of us. It's right here, it's right now. And we're seeing great results already. Uh, and it's not just our company. We see other companies, other nations going after it as well. So very critical to stay focused on it. We think the timelines are very achievable. And um, you know, we, we were talking earlier today that we've demonstrated this vehicle for the Army once. We look forward to doing it again next year um, and get a chance to see how far we've gotten it. Jim Miller, uh, who is a Business Development Director for Combat Vehicles here at the AE Systems. Jim, thanks very, very much, and hope you guys, you have a terrific uh, AUSA. Thank you, thank you very much. Good to talk to you.